Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the amateur theme park design podcast. I'm your host, Andrew Spong. We don't own the rights to any of these media properties, we're just using them for inspiration for our imaginary parks. One of the main objectives of this show is to prove that anyone can use their imagination to come up with something kind of cool, so even amateurs can be very successful. If you're interested in joining the team or potentially being on an episode someday, uh, we would love to hear your ideas. Please head on over to our Facebook page or our subreddit. Enjoy the show! All right, so this week on Amusement Sparks, my guest is Gary Lane of Saturday Morning Rewind, which is a podcast uh, that is really awesome, especially for those of us who like cartoons and, you know, just animation in general. Gary, uh, what do you want to do today? Well, I want to talk about <laughs> cartoons. Awesome, me too. <laughs> it's, it's what I do every time I go on a show, pretty much. But uh, <laughs> more specifically, uh, a theme park based around the idea of the Disney Afternoon. Excellent. And so that was like the animation block. What did it start in the early nineties, like ninety ninety, I think? Yeah, the it's a little it's a little questionable at times because uh-huh. like some of the shows that aired, especially in the first season, were started in the mid eighties. Right. But they actually became an afternoon block in nineteen ninety one, I believe. Okay, cool. And and those series when they originally aired, like in the late eighties, were they on Disney Channel? Was Disney Channel a thing back then? I don't know. I'm a little too young to actually remember whenever what channel Gummy Bears first aired on. Right. But I know that I saw it on ABC. Yeah, and that's a Disney owned network, so I guess that would make sense. If they didn't have Disney Channel yet, let's let's throw it on ABC. So exactly, okay, maybe yeah. that was it. I mean I guess this is all Googleable stuff, but <laughs> just so like so I can wrap my head around it a little bit. That's awesome. And the the animation block was like a two hour block for the most part, right? And yep. it ran for several years, like throughout the up to the mid nineties. I remember it from my childhood, um, definitely. Like, that was a a cool block in a lot of those shows I was really into, especially when I was really young. Um, Yeah, nice to come home from school and have that as an option. Yeah, oh, absolutely. (laughs) So the specific shows, I think, yeah, you said Gummy Bears was one of the, like, the main early ones. Uh, DuckTales, Chippendale, um, Darkwing Duck. Yeah. Are there other ones you wanted to include in this theme park? Um, I I have a couple of just quick jots of uh notes mm-hmm. i don't know if i don't know if jots works as a singular term but, i kind of like or, it though jots. in that sense yeah <laughs> it's invo- evocative i like it exactly yeah so i I, <laughs> I i scribbled down a few notes for stuff even up to mighty ducks which was i think the last official oh, disney man. afternoon thing yeah. so i don't even know if that's canon technically right. but i think so mighty ducks had some some really cool action figures i can remember from when i was a kid that's all i remember about that show, <laughs> yeah <laughs> So I've got a an idea for like a warm up. This is like just a creativity exercise. Um, I'm tentatively calling this the tornado. It's like a toy <laughs> tornado. And I basically, like I've created two lists. One is a bunch of adjectives that apply to toys that you'll see throughout toy stores, and then the other one is just a list of types of toys. So mashing those two things up and randomly generating a combination. Our first option here for the, our design project is an LED screen fashion doll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not I'm not sure if that means it is a screen and it's like it's like a paper doll but in a digital age so you can import you know images to put on the clothes or if it's like the doll has a screen on it but I feel like that's not as fun or useful. That feels Barbie. very 90s. Yeah, that like. does. <laughs> yeah, let's let's slap a screen on that. Yeah. <laughs> uh it's it's actually funny that that random thing came up because I saw that they were doing some sort of digitally faced Barbie or something wow. along those lines. Oh, like that kind of um, projection technology that they use in the Disney parks sometimes. I think that could I, be cool. I think so. Yeah, I I don't know any details, but yeah. I saw that there was some sort of new age Barbie happening oh. from Mattel. That actually sounds really cool because like even you know in the nineties they had like um, I had like this robot cat that like its its face was just a very simple screen and it could like light up and change its emotions. 
But yeah. applying that to a, a doll would be kind of cool. Like, you know, you could see the emotions and kind of make it more interactive. Mm -hmm. I could definitely see that, see that being the future of like little kids dolls as well. Like, um, you know how you, they always try to make them like more realistic where they have to like go to the bathroom and you have to feed them and all that stuff. It's like, right. what if, what if they actually like had a face for like, you know, I'm sad or yeah. oh, that would be really annoying though. Cause then it's starting to get to, like a real baby. <laughs> like this thing has <laughs> needs and it's not shy about telling me about the needs. Oh, that's, that's true. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I, I like the idea that you said originally, though, the paper dolls concept. That's yeah. That's kind of cool. I mean, it's still something that I think people are interested in, but it's like a very niche audience. Yeah. I, I feel like making it digital would really expand it to the yeah. new generation. And I'm thinking you could make it a 3D thing as well, so you could you know kind of rotate the, the character around. I guess this would just be a website. It doesn't need to be like a toy that you buy. Um, right. But that could be kind of cool. I'm, I'm taking a, a 3D modeling class right now, and so I'm really into like, you know, kind of looking at things from a two-dimensional screen, but they actually represent a three-dimensional object and kind of that interplay right. is really fun to kind of wrap your head around. And so that'd be kind of interesting if you're just, I mean, this isn't exactly a, a type of toy I'm super familiar with, but I'm imagining that they usually target, you know, people who want to design fashions and that kind of thing, like come up mm -hmm. with their own outfits. And you could definitely do that in this kind of thing. If it's an LED, if it's a screen, you know, like a website and you can, turn the character around and like look at them from different angles and maybe change your lighting settings. Oh, yeah. Man, that sounds kind of cool. And it could almost be just an intro to not only like fashion design, but also 3d modeling. Like how do For they sure. make, how do they make characters in Pixar movies look so cool? Yeah. And it could, yeah. Wow. It's almost got like educational content there as well. I think, I think uh, the people at Project Runway should listen to this podcast <laughs> and <laughs> make Yo. this, even if it's just an app based game, like something about it could, could really, work i think yeah and i i do think that we're kind of reaching a new audience with this like five minute segment <laughs> that's never really right? cared about this show before fascinating <laughs> um this the second item on our list uh i'm just gonna do two i think we'll see how it goes but <laughs> it is a remote controlled building toy <laughs> so <laughs> so like lego but remote controlled mm -hmm. wow what, um, are your, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that uh, uh okay so once again, I'm basing off something I'm familiar with in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, back whenever I was a kid, they had uh, – I forget what they were, but you go to like the smart toy stores, not so much the Toys R Us's or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they had those little building sets with little remote control vehicles and little ball things that you could like kind of weave through the structure of it. Wow. And, and I can't think of what they're called though. They were kind of so really is, big for about a year. Is the ball <laughs> remote controlled? No, no, it's it's like a, it's essentially like a construction thing that you uh -huh. sort of build up. Yeah. And and uh, the little vehicles, like you've got a dump truck and you've got conveyor belts and stuff, and you control oh. them with different buttons on this controller. That it sounds looked, familiar. Yeah, it looked like a Sega Dreamcast controller, basically. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, it was it was kind of a neat little thing that was everywhere for about a year and a half and then gone. Yeah. So. It sounds like a, a concept that could could keep going like building toys like lego is you know yeah. huge right now and like has been for 50 years or whatever but yeah i think that adding some some modern technology to that would be pretty cool whether mm -hmm. it's through you know kind of you can control the ways that certain parts of them move or if it's the thing itself is remote control like there's a remote control car base and then you build the car on top of it i think that's kind of a cop-out that's not that interesting but but yeah your idea like the thing that you had whatever that toy was called where you, yeah. can, you can kind of like build a factory or like a chase scene action set and then right. use different buttons to control like a conveyor belt going this way and an elevator going up. And yeah, that yeah. sounds awesome, man. And that's definitely something I could see being on like Kickstarter, like uh -huh. um, people, you know, raising funds for this, this kind of like maker slash DIY kind of mindset interpretation of what a Lego building toy kind of is. Yeah, yeah, wow. I can dig that. That one worked out as well. There we go. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, that that was a fun little warm up. Thank you for for uh, going with me on that random little journey. I enjoyed it. No, that's fun. You could almost do a whole podcast based yeah, on yeah. this. Yeah, <laughs> who knows? Maybe we'll do a spin off eventually. We'll see. There you go. <laughs> Let's get into it. Um, All right, we're gonna do a Disney afternoon theme park. <laughs> Stories to share all through the forest. They sing out in chorus, marching along as their song fills the air. Gummy bears bouncing here and there.
gummy bears, I mean, is, is so... <laughs> it's different. I could, yeah, I could not come up with much for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, that one really captured my imagination. I had not seen gummy bears since I was a kid. Um, and, like, the other ones I've revisited, like, oh, you know, during high school or college or whatever, I'd, like, look them up and be like, I wonder if that show's any good. But gummy bears I had totally forgotten about until we started talking about this episode. Um, right. I had a couple of ideas for it because I watched, I don't know, four or five episodes of it. Um, just the, the like, lore of that world is really interesting to me. It's almost like a fantasy world, but yep. with anthropomorphic bears. But there's also still humans, and it's got a lot of, like, a lot of interesting design elements. It almost reminds me of um, Hearthstone, like, World of Warcraft kind of style, where it's, like, fantasy, but there's, like, some kind of technology elements, and it just kind of seems like ancient technology. And that's yep. like pretty much the world of gummy bears as goofy and as like unexpected as that is. Um, they had some really interesting, like ancient technology. They have like a flying machine, um, which <laughs> yeah. is almost, you know, like that kind of uh, Da Vinci kind of design always like catches my imagination where it's like, what if they had these advanced technological things, you know, way back in this, this other era where the building materials would have been different and just kind of, it, it just seemed way more magical back then. Like things now are, it's, it's all based in science. Whereas, yeah. In this world, like they don't necessarily know that. There's like, well, if we put enough gummy berry juice into this, it'll work. <laughs> it's a lot more magical. Kind of like a steampunk setting without robots and the old west. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. That's that's very true. Um, and this they they have this system of uh of tunnels called the quick tunnels. I think they were called that yeah. they used to like transport around. And I was like, that's just pretty much a roller coaster. Like, it's <laughs> it's this like amazing network of high speed tunnels. Basically, I think you just sit in them like, like it's a tube slide, but mm -hmm. you just like quickly travel across this whole, you know, this whole area that they have access to. So I think that I would like be that. a pretty easy roller coaster, but yeah, I don't know if there's that much depth to this as far as creating like an immersive park, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff to look at and we could do yeah. a couple of different vehicles. Like I know there was an episode with a submarine, there's a uh, right. flying machine, but I do think the overall like appeal, like the visual design of the park would be really cool. I just don't know what all like attractions we would want to put in there necessarily. Yeah, I I get it. I mean, like I think that sort of like Mickey's Toontown in in Disneyland, mm -hmm. it could just sort of be the layout. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to have too many specific rides. You could walk through the castle. It could have a lot of walkthrough potential. Essentially, yeah, I agree completely with that. That's an awesome awesome idea. Yeah. Um, and another thing I noticed. Um, is his name Zummy Gummy or Zoomy Gummy? I think it's Zummy. Uh, I think it's Zummy because everything else rhymes. <laughs> he always used like spoonerisms. Like he'd mix up the first letters. So like instead of saying gummy bears, he'd call it bummy gears. Like he always <laughs> right. mixed up the first letters. And I was like, that'd be kind of funny if like some of the names of the roller coasters, you would just like mix the name, the first, you know, switch the first letter of each word around. Oh, yeah. 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 So I don't I know. Like instead that. of a, a flying ship, it'd be a, a sighing flip or something like that. And he'd be like, <laughs> Because that was, like, his main character trait is that he, like, stumbles over his words. <laughs> like, right. I mean, he's a nice guy and everything, but, like, that's the one thing you, that he needs to be in the episode for. Like, oh, let's let's have this guy say something wrong. That'll be yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just I just sort of had an idea. Maybe uh, call it Gummy Berry Bouncers. Cool. And just sort of have, like, a either trampoline parks are all the rage right now. Absolutely. Or have one of those old school uh, bungee jump type yeah. things. Right, where you can uh, do flips and, yeah. Oh, that'd yeah, be awesome. Yeah. I like that a lot because when they in this in the in canon, um, they drink this stuff called gummy berry juice, which I don't yeah. really want to know where that comes from. I, I guess gummy <laughs> berry, not gummy bears, right? Yeah, right, okay. right. Okay. <laughs> um, so they drink this gummy berry juice, and then they can like jump like Superman, like just mm -hmm. jump insanely high. Um, and yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. So we could just sell gummy berry juice as you know just the the drink choice within the park, and there's different flavors maybe, and then yep. there's you know, this big old bounce zone where there, there could be both, you know, trampoline parks, but then there's also a, a harnessed like bungee type area. Right. And there could even yeah. be some like thrills, you know, a lot of theme parks have the like slingshot kinds of things where it's, it's about, you know, still using <laughs> the same concepts of like a bungee system mm -hmm. where they, you know, yank you up into the air, but they just do it insanely fast. Yeah. I've always <laughs> wanted to try one of those, but I'm a little scared. They are thrilling. Like it, it makes, <laughs> it makes you feel like you're flying like, a fighter jet or something like it's just insanely fast um right i think it was i've been skydiving and i've been on that and i honestly think i would do that again because it's it costs like you know a sixth as much as skydiving and it's almost the same level of thrill 
uh, huh. with a little bit more safety involved. <laughs> right. So yeah, it's it's definitely worth it. Um, it's it's one of my favorite thrills. It's a really short, you know, burst of of excitement, but it's it's really exciting. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So I think that the the kind of overall world of this, you know, the kind of fantasy anthropomorphic animal uh, mm-hmm. thing is going to be vis- very visually appealing. And then, I think so. But yeah, I, I agree. And I think that the art style of the rest of these that we're going to be going over is very similar. And Gummy Bears is a little bit different because it's a little bit earlier. Like it's kind of a predecessor to the rest of this Disney yeah. Afternoon block. Um, so the other ones I think will translate or like transition really smoothly. And this one might be the only one that's a little bit weird. But I think mm-hmm. we can just kind of like put it in the woods. Like, you know, there's uh, some just generic wooded areas that are the transition. So when you're leaving uh, Gummy Glen, like the area where they live, you know, you just yep. walk through some woods and then you can just kind of be in the next town over, you know, St. Canard or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I, I really like that you, you had, we have basically the same idea here. Like yeah. these, these character settings are so interesting. We mm-hmm. might as well just use them. I mean. Oh, absolutely. They, they are absolutely <laughs> fascinating. And that's something that I think really adds to theming really not, not easily, but very solidly. It's mm-hmm. always a good idea. I think in theme parks to just kind of go all the way in with, even if it's just like the, the outer walls, like the, or the inner walls of the park, make them look like something other than just a wall. Yes. Um, yeah, I think that's that adds a lot to the immersion factor. If everywhere you can see, it feels like you're in Gummy Glen. You, know? mm-hmm. right. <laughs> you don't have to actually believe it, but having being fully immersed like that, physically immersed, it's like, wow, this is this is themed. It really gets you right in the yeah the thing. Well, I mean, not to bring it up again, but like one of my favorite parts of Disneyland is Mickey's Toontown because yeah. it just feels like you're in Roger Rabbit or something, right? Uh, which is so cool. It is so cool. Yeah, you're totally right. Whereas a lot of the other lands. They have a lot of themed attractions, but the overall mm-hmm. experience is like, I'm in an amusement park, you know? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cool. That's yeah. awesome. Um, sweet. Is there anything else you'd like to add for, for gummy bears? Not immediately, but mm-hmm. I, my, the way my brain works, something might pop up. <laughs> awesome. I like that. That's, that's really good. Um, cool. So, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. 